All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to the Math Puzzle Crash Course. Um, I have a video I wanted to do, um, basically revisiting uh, one that I did before, just talking briefly about critical thinking with mathematics. Um, in this uh, video, I actually wanted to go through an example, um, kind of a strange example, but nevertheless, an example of uh, of someone who's making some uh, kind of strange claims uh, with some strange um, evidence, some strange uh, thoughts about what constitutes a credible source, uh, I guess is all I could say. Um, first of all, I wanted to go back to this concept that I talked about in the previous video, but uh, critical thinking in mathematics has uh, everything to do with uh, making reasoned decisions and judgments, uh, which which is critical, uh, being able to consider the criteria and think through a decision is more important than guessing or applying some rule without considering if it is even relevant. Uh, and that's got a big factor um, in this example. Um, there was an online discussion concerning the answer to a problem. Uh, which was 50 plus 10 times 0 plus 7 plus 2. Uh, someone was trying to make an argument that the order of operations convention does not apply all of the time. Uh, it certainly applies when you have multiple operations, uh, but their, their thought was, no, it doesn't apply all of the time, so the answer must be 9. Uh, they were just solving left to right. Well, I kind of played along just to see uh, where this individual's argument would go. Uh, there was a mix of arguments being presented, uh, not the least of which was an appeal to uh, authority fallacy. Um, and I just wanted to say briefly that, you know, simply making an appeal to an authority does not make an argument valid. Uh, but, I, and I see this a lot of times where someone says, well, my brother is a math professor, and I know that he said, will tell me the answer is nine or or something along that line. I, I run into this stuff all the time. Um, and of course, that person hasn't even answered but um, or hasn't even looked at it. So, you know, simply making an appeal to an authority does not make an argument valid. But it's also not reasonable to ignore the claims of authorities who actually have shown knowledge on the subject. And that's a big, and that's a big, if right there, um, and that's where we have a lot of issues. But um, so anyhow, first of all, when we look at this problem, and I, I've covered this problem in its own video, I've got videos on order of operations, so I'll put the links in the uh, notes. But with 50 plus 10 times 0 plus 7 plus 2, um, there are no ambiguities. Um, the order of operations convention clearly explains this problem and gives us the answer of 59. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the details of order of operations and why multiplication has precedence over addition, that kind of thing. I've covered that in other videos at a great length, um, but I'll reference those videos in the links um, in this episode's description. Uh, but I will show here the, you know, basically your parentheses, exponents, multiplication, and division left to right, addition and subtraction left to right. But the rest of it I'm leaving in those other videos. And I'll put the links there. Um, there are ambiguities in mathematics, and the order of operations convention is not, you know, free of those. There, there are ambiguities with order of operations. You know, you've got things like multiplication by juxtaposition. You know, where you don't have a multiplication symbol and there's just parentheses, so the multiplication is implied. You know, there's this standard that's and it's not completely universal, but some have used it where the multiplication outside of the parentheses takes priority over going left to right. You know, that it conflicts with order of operations. So there are some ambiguities, things like that. Um, but none of that stuff relates to the example problem that we're looking at. And um and yet as many people do, this person she quoted a Harvard article that she obviously didn't understand. You know, it's an article talking about these ambiguities, which don't even exist in this problem. But people like to use articles like that to try to discredit order, order of operations. 
uh, even though they don't even understand what the point of the article was. Um, this article here, which uh, um, I'm going to try to put the link in the notes here, but it's this uh, one from Harvard University uh, that someone uh, posted. And it's a, it's a pretty good article. It talks about like an example here of 2x divided by 3y minus 1, where x equals 9 and y equals 2. That's the example that's listed in that article that this person, you know, posted and claimed that helps prove her point, which, which it doesn't. But yeah, the example here, 2x over 3y minus 1, is an example of an ambiguous problem. The author of that article is correct. Um, it's unclear in that example if, you know, we're to interpret it as, you know, 2x divided by 3, all in parentheses, times y minus 1, which would give us an answer of 11, or are do we assume that it's 2x divided by just 3 times y in parentheses minus 1, which could give us an answer of uh, 2. Um, so, yeah, there's some ambiguities about how, how we're looking at that. You know, problem. If you look at the original problem, are we assuming that, you know, what are we assuming here? We're assuming that just the three is being divided and the y is not being divided. You know that that type of thing. So, so you know, if you're applying critical thinking, how does this Harvard article get you to the point of being able to claim that 50 plus 10 times zero plus seven plus two equals nine? You know, critical thinking should obviously lead one to understand that this Harvard article is not even related to the problem that we're looking at. You know, just because there are fringe ambiguities does not mean you trash the entire order of operations. So unfortunately, we aren't done yet. This same person then posted a screenshot, and they didn't bother to post. I happen to have read this before. I've seen this post. I've seen this uh, sentence or this group of sentences, and you know she just posted the picture as it is. I added the uh, I added the uh, annotation down here that's it's attributed to Flor Florian Kajori, who was a Swiss American mathematician who wrote the history of mathematical notations around 1928 1929. Uh, the 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 picture that she posted comes from Volume One, page 274, and it says. Order of operations in terms containing both uh, uh, division and multiplication. If an arithmetical or algebraic term contains division and multiplication, then there is at present no agreement as to which shall be used first. It is best to avoid such expressions. For instance, if in 24 divided by 4 times 2, the signs are used as they occur in the order from left to right, the answer is 12. If the sign multiply is done first, the answer is 3. Some authors follow the rule that the multiplications and divisions shall be taken in the order in which they occur, which is what, what the modern interpretation of order of operations is and has been ever since this book. So, you know, other textbook writers direct that multiplication in any order be performed first, then divisions as they occur. From left to right. So there were other authors, but we're talking about, you know, the early 20th century, probably the, you know, late 19th century. Um, the, you know, and of course they recommend brackets. Now it says an English committee recommends the use of brackets to avoid ambiguity. Now, you can definitely have brackets. You know, they're redundant or parentheses. They would be redundant. You could put those around the 10 times zero. But, but basically this. Well, this quotation here, this uncertainty hasn't been present in order of operations since that time. We're talking almost 100 years. So quoting this in 2023, it's historically interesting, but that's about it. it it's, it's meaningless in an argument that you're making in 2023. And it's a meaningless in an argument in the 1950s or 1940s. This, this was resolved after this. And this is like the new, probably the newest book that you're ever going to find that talks about, well, gee, we really don't know which we should do first. That, that was something that was hashed out almost 100 years ago. So this crazy patchwork quilt that she tried to make didn't stop there. Uh, then she went on to post this screenshot in the forum. 
And she used it. She was using this to try to continue supporting her her baseless argument. Uh, and it it really makes no sense. It says, "Do all functions need parentheses?" Well, parenth and then she highlighted parentheses are necessary when you want to invoke functions. Calling on the name of a function without following it by parentheses will point towards the function object, but will not call the function itself. The code inside the body of the function will not get executed. Well, guess what? I'm an engineer, also do programming. Right away, my first thought was, gee, this kind of sounds like, you know, a lot of the languages that I know, like Python or any language where you're calling a function. And sure enough, um, uh, you know, I did a Google search. And I realized that she just copied and pasted this info from a Google search uh, that's it's related. You know, I knew it was related to some high-level computer language. So I typed in the uh, the words in a Google search, and I found the identical quote in a blog that's related to programming in the Python language. So it was a pretty good guess on my part. You know, she was obviously just copying and pasting Google results, thinking that they were meaningful. But she wasn't even looking at the references that were cited. And I see similar things done all the time where people will quote like random blog articles or, you know, somebody has an opinion on some blog and, and they'll, they'll, they'll copy that. They'll do a screenshot and post that and go, look, I just found this. This proves my point. And they, they don't realize that they're gra just grabbing garbage. And this isn't, this isn't garbage. This is actually related to the Python programming language, but it has nothing to do with the discussion of order of operations, but she doesn't even realize that. So then, you know, she has a post in here, and I'm I'm not giving out names, but order of operations was not expressed, quotation mark, you know, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. The answer is nine. So in the same way that you don't need a road sign, you know, or a sign to tell you which side of the road to drive on, you know, if in the UK, you're going to drive on the left. If you're in the US, you're going to drive on the right. It varies in other countries. But do you need a sign? Do you need somebody to tell you every time you get in the car what side of the road you need to drive on? Of course not. The same thing is true with the order of operations convention, but she doesn't, she doesn't understand this. So as she continued to copy and paste odd pieces of information, she then posted this as if it was somehow relevant to the discussion of this problem. Uh, she said, what is the source of the problem? We know that addition and subtraction orders can be interchanged. Well, no kidding. That's not a basis for claiming the answer is nine. Yes, addition and subtraction are interchangeable. I I've said this many times in, in my order of operations videos. Other people have said it in in their information. This this is you know, this is well established knowledge. Addition and subtraction have equal precedence. Subtraction is the addition of a negative number. It's the same operation. There's no difference. So yeah, they're interchangeable. It doesn't matter if I add five or subtract three first, or subtract three first and add five. You're going to get the same thing. Uh, and then there's this random thing this is called associativity it almost looks like it's as if it's a different uh, maybe a different post but this is called associativity but already this is trickier if one tries to modify this because something i don't even know where that's going but she fails to mention that you know the associative property applies to addition and multiplication but it's but not to subtraction and division, um, and the associative property is also pretty irrelevant to this discussion. Um, so I just want to say, if if the associative property is confusing, or if anything I'm mentioning here about order of operations is confusing, you know, please check some of these other video links that I have, and, and I I do have descriptions because unfortunately, when some people start posting garbage like this. People who really don't understand start thinking, wow, this person must be smart because they're posting all this information. But in fact, they don't know what the, the, the people posting all these screenshots and information don't have any idea what they're doing. And I need to point it out because they're leading a lot of other people astray as far as, you know, their knowledge of mathematics.
Uh, but then she goes on to do more random copying and pasting, you know, as if somehow Google results are an authority on mathematics. Uh, and then she has this, and this is the exact screenshot with the highlighted text. Is math always done left to right? Now, I'm going to try to read this, but it doesn't really make sense as it is. Subtraction, period. Division and multiplication, comma, and addition and subtraction, comma, have the same priority. Then the, the convention is to work from left to right when the order of operations would be unclear. And so it looks like to be, you know, it looks like it's poorly written English um, when you look at this on the surface. But with a little checking uh, on our copy and paste fan here, uh, a simple Google search of is math always done left to right uh, reveals the following. So here was where I, here's where this came from. It came from Newcastle University in the UK. And so if you actually click on the link, it still doesn't quite make sense the way it is, but this is how Google, you know, aggregates all the words. But if you click on the actual link and go to the actual web page, guess what? The actual highlighted text explains this odd looking English from her copy and paste. You'll, you'll see what I mean in the next page here. So this is the actual page where that text came from in the Google search. <clears throat> and you can see the highlighted text that's kind of like a purplish, uh, what, what do you call that color? Uh, whatever, I'm, I'm, I don't know. It says subtraction, then division and multiplication and addition and subtraction have the same priority. The convention is to work from left to right when the order of operations would be unclear. And then it goes on to say, note an alternative form of this mnemonic, or I should say probably acronym, is BIDMAS. Um, you've got um, you know, you got PEMDAS, there's BIDMAS, BEDMAS, so on and so on and so forth. But uh, the text she copied and pasted was highlighted text from this original page. Um, and when you look at it, you know, it's like, okay, that doesn't look so strange. You know, I think what they, what they were trying to say is, you know, it means that division and multiplication have equal precedence. Yes, if you understand order of operations, you already know that. Uh, and they have a higher priority than addition and subtraction. And addition and subtraction have equal precedence. We know that. Uh, <clears throat> the convention is to work from left to right using the order of operations. And the only thing I can assume is that she must have interpreted it as work from left to right if you are unclear, which obviously she's unclear about many things. And then there was this final appeal, appeal to an authority where she says, uh, yay, okay, thank you. I am pretty clear about how to do order of operations. But if you knew anything further than that, you would know it is not always what they're looking for. And because of this, you will come up with different answers. I just stick around. I'm going to go talk to my teacher over at Harvard, who is also a good friend of mine. You can confirm it all on your own, who he is, and you can do an image search if you need to. I'll be posting it soon this week. So, yeah, I actually, um, she actually did post the name. Uh, which I'm not going to repeat here, of somebody who is supposedly at in the Harvard Mathematics Department. I looked the name up, and there's nobody by that name that actually works in the Mathematics Department at Harvard. So I don't know if this was just some troll that was posting uh, just for kicks to get everybody riled up, or, or someone who's just very confused. I don't know. So up to this point, she's quoted a mathematics book from 1928 to 1929 that's not relevant today to how order of operations has been interpreted. Then she quoted from a Python programming blog and now threatens to clear it all up when she gets the word from her so-called Oracle, who I find out doesn't really exist. There's nobody by that name. So what I want to say is it's not my intention to be making fun of her. Um, I've hidden her name. And I'm actually really concerned for her and think her issues are like way deeper than mathematics. I mean, there's some personal stuff going on to be this disconnected from reality. Um, you know, I refuse to resort to any kind of name calling. And I really don't want any kind of like nasty comments about her on here. I just need to show 
um, what kind of things get posted as being evidence uh, you know, to try to make an argument that, and things that are just totally ridiculous that people should be able to see through. Um, and I'm I'm not sure what's holding her back from being able to, you know, to utilize critical thinking, but but it's escaping her big time here. Uh, the more she posted, the more I realized that she's really not connected to reality at all. Um, but the real the real issue for all of this stuff is like it's one thing to show how somebody's totally missing it here. But the real issue is that there's a lot of people that have, a, you know, a lower mathematics knowledge, and they actually latched onto her as if she was some sort of authority. There were people who thought, oh, yeah, you just go left to right, and the answer is nine, and here's this cool girl who's posting all these screenshots. You know, this lady's posting all this information, and she must know what she's talking about. You know, they looked at her as if she was some sort of an authority. Uh, and and a lot of people, you know, who forgot about her order of op forgot about the order of operations, saw her authoritative tone, and you know they they saw another hill to die on with her. I guess basically is what I'm looking at. You know, they started taking her side in this. Um, so you know, it's hard enough to explain these basic mathematical concepts to people, and then to have her muddy the waters with nonsense that would be obvious to anyone with you know any with some knowledge of, you know, elementary school mathematics and the order of operations. Um, so I want to go back to this thing here. You know, simply making an appeal to an authority does not make an argument valid, but it also is not reasonable to ignore the claims of authorities who actually have shown knowledge on the subject. Uh, and this sentence above, I think, is where critical thinking often dies. Uh, too many people cannot differenti differentiate the difference between you know, some crazy blogger or vlogger and an actual credible source or authority. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to cover this real briefly. Um, it was kind of crazy. I just I couldn't believe the stuff that was being posted. But I've, I've seen other similar posts like that where people will cut and grab things like, oh, well, there's this multiplication by juxtaposition. Or what about, you know, when you have the slashed and you're dividing and you know, all this stuff, and it's all stuff that does not even relate to the problem that we're looking at, but somehow they think that that justifies trashing the order of operations. So um, I'm going to leave this where it is, um, take what you want out of it, but I just wanted to cover this real briefly. Uh, have a great day.